Hello and welcome, my name is Fraser from Elementary Technology. Today we're looking at the view board from ViewSonic. Maybe you're looking to move away from interactive whiteboards in the classroom and you're starting to look into new screens. There are so many benefits, so what I'd like to do is run those through for you. The first one for me is the image. The fact that you can see it no matter where you are in the classroom and no matter how light your classroom is. I've got huge windows over there and also over there and my students can see absolutely fine. We don't have glare issues. Also, the image quality, when they're at the back of the room, they can read the text very clearly. So this makes a huge difference from interactive whiteboards. And then there's the touch. So for instance, if I'm modeling handwriting, or even if I've got my students up having a go, I need that touch to be absolutely perfect. If it's slightly off, or there's any latency, I just can't do it, it's not easy to use. Whereas in with this board, it's pinpoint perfect. So that's really important to me. It just means whenever I'm using it, whenever I go to access a tool, or maybe change my pen color, I can do that really easily. So they're the two main ones for me, and that's why I really like using a screen instead of an interactive whiteboard. But if I just go back to the home screen for now, Let's look at a few more features of this board. So, first of all, you have the home screen. And the home screen is something very new. Obviously, when we turn on our interactive whiteboard, it takes us straight to our desktop. Whereas in with this screen, it actually has an Android built in. So the great thing about the Android is all the features on this screen I can use without my board plugged into my laptop at all. So for instance, I can access the software. I can screen share and browse the internet and download apps without having to plug in my laptop. So this is really key for me, I do like this, I must admit. So for instance, with the screen share, if I've got devices in the classroom, my students or myself can share what's on that screen, just ping it straight up onto here. Also being able to access the software easily just means at one tap, I'm straight in and I can start using the tools. So I do really like that. And then moving on from there, looking at something more familiar, being able to access your desktop is also really easy. Just one tap and I can move straight out of the Android back into a more familiar environment, which is my desktop. And this is where that touch really comes into play. For instance, if I'm wanting to open up lessons or move things around, it's very quick and simple. You know, I'm not having to be really precise about what I do. The board is very clever at picking up what I'm trying to do. For instance, when I'm in the software, if I've made a mistake and I want to rub something out, it's really easy to do so and it's quite intuitive. I don't have to go and grab a rubber, I can use my palm and I can rub things out and then I can use my pen to put it back. So whilst we're in the software, let's have a quick look through the software. So this is the software where you can do your lesson delivery and it's called my view board. So in here, I've got a lesson that I've already started, and what I can do is I can add more pages. So if I come in here, I can add another page and keep going, a bit like in PowerPoint, adding flip charts as I go. So I can build that up. I can also access them all over here so I can see all the different ones that I've done at a click of a button. Down here, we've got all of our tools. What I really like is I can actually take that toolbar and I can pop it over there. I might have it over here if I like. So that's quite handy, dependent if you're left or right handed where you want it to be. Personally, I have it down the bottom because then my students can reach it as well. So some of the tools in here, if I click on the window, it takes me back to Windows, but now I've got the ability to annotate as well. So I can come into here, I can grab a pen or even a highlighter and I can mark make on the screen. So maybe I've got a website open or an application and I can annotate over the top of that. So this is a really handy tool and very quick and simple to move back and forth. So for instance, I press on the screen, it takes me back into the software, I press on the window and I'm straight back into Windows. So I can actually move between the two quite fluidly. I have the ability to save down here and open up files within the software. And here we've got what's called the magic box and there's lots and lots in here. For instance, I can grab a post-it note, I can choose my colour, and then on here I can make some notes. So we might be talking about the times table today. 
I'm going to leave that for now and then I'm going to move on and what that does is it pops it up on my screen so I can have loads of notes on my screen that I can go back to at any time. As well as that in here I have access to lots of mass tools so for instance if we start up a new page and then go back into those mass tools then for instance let's just open a few they're all very intuitive to use so again this is where the touch really comes into play when I want to move things around it's very easy to do so for instance with this ruler you know I can also use it so as long as I'm close to the line I can then draw along the ruler really nice and easily see as I'm finished with it I can just click the X and then it's gone same with this, very intuitive to use, obviously normally I would pick it up by the handle so I know that the arm would then stretch it in and out. I've got my angle here and then I can use my pen there to draw. Again, nice and easy to move. This one I absolutely love, I'm forever losing dice in the classroom. So here I've got digital dice, I can add a few more in, I can even change the colour. So then all I do is I tap on that and it rolls the dice. A nice little neat one to have at your fingertips because as I said I'm forever losing the dice to my board games. Okay, so moving on from there, back into the magic box. You can also connect up a visualizer. So this goes back to what we said about the image. The image is really important being able to see clearly. If you've got a visualizer in your classroom or maybe you're thinking about having one with your new board, then this is perfect because the screen quality is brilliant. So anything you're looking at under your visualizer is going to look fantastic on the screen. Then here we've got access to YouTube and images. So what you can do then, I'll show you what I've got on another page, is if we just open up a new page, go back to my William Shakespeare one. So here I've added in a YouTube video, and as you can see here behind the post-it there, I've grabbed a picture. And I did that one from here. So all I do is I go into maybe YouTube and I type in what I'm looking for and then tap on the video. And then that instantly pops it on the screen. Same with the image. It's very much like doing a Google search, but I don't have to copy and paste it across. And also with the YouTube video, it will just play the video. So I'm not actually having to go into YouTube where there's quite a lot of distractions normally. On from there, we've got these two here. And these are the real big ones for me. So it's the availability to be able to question students or quiz students at your fingertips. And more importantly, doing it with their devices. So let's show you that in action. So what I can do here, I can put a question up. So let's stick with the times table. So there's my question to my students. And instead of just saying like, who thinks they know the answer and just getting one answer, what I can do is I can connect up devices. This is very easy to do, and it only takes students a few seconds to get connected. And again, that's a feature I like. I think there's a lot of things on the market like this, but quite a lot of them are difficult to connect up. Personally, I find if it's difficult to connect up, I'm not going to use it in the classroom. I haven't got the time. Whereas in with this, it connects up really quickly. So as a student now, I can write my answer. I'm going to say six, and then I just click send. And what's that sent on there? I'll get a little confirmation to say it's sent, and the teacher can see the answers here. So obviously if I had a class in right now, I'd have 28, and then all along here, we'd get to 28 different answers. And as I said before, what's really nice is it's getting everyone involved, not just one or two people that are happy to put their hands up. So I like this, it makes for a lot of discussion. In class, I can ask a quick question, but sometimes I find we're still discussing it 20 minutes later. As well as that one, what you can also do here, again, back into the magic box, you can see why it's called the magic box, it has so much in there. So in here, I can actually build question sets. So this is where we're talking about quizzes. So my, I might want to ask multiple choice questions, true or false ones, and all I do is tap into there, pop in the question, and then I can pop in the answer and select which one's right. It's as simple as that to build, I can then add another question in and then file it out to my students. So I just click play there, and I've given my students two and a half minutes to answer this question. So it's a really nice and easy one. Again, it appears on their device. So now I can answer on here, and it'll go straight back to my teacher. 
So with this, I've just got the one question here about King Henry, but I might want to put multiple questions in, so maybe 10 questions. Make it a bit of a quiz at the end of the day. And also, I can have a time cap on it. So let's say it is at the end of the day, and it is in the last 10 minutes. I want to keep it to 10 minutes. So I'll allow my students one minute per question, and then that keeps them in time, and we finish on time. So this, again, a really, really good tool to get everyone involved with their devices and very easy to set up. So that's the magic box. Moving on from there, I've got the hand tool here so I can move things around very easily on my screen. I've also got this very neat selector tool, which I like. If I want to select something, I just draw a circle around it and then I can select it. I can use my tools, so maybe I'm just going to change the colour of it. There's lots of other tools in there that I can play around with, but as you can see, it's all very easy and intuitive. We offer extensive training to ensure that you can get the most out of your screen when you purchase it, but actually, straight out the box, you will feel quite confident to start with. So the next one along is my pen tools. So in here, instead of just having a pen, I've got lots of different tools. I've got my paintbrush, I've got my highlighter, which I use an awful lot, and all sorts of things. And what you can change on here, if I have a look at maybe the paintbrush, I can change the thickness of the paint and I can change the transparency. Transparency is really good maybe if you're making notes over the top of something and you still want to see it. So that's really good. And then one that I absolutely love is this AI pen. So in here, you go in and if you're as bad as drawing as me, you have a go at drawing it and then it finds it for you. So there we go, a much better bucket. And all I do is double tap it there. And as you can see, it's now popped up here. So if you're as bad as drawing as me, that is a brilliant tool. Moving on, I've obviously got my rubber, so I can use the rubber to rub things out. But as I mentioned before, you can use your palm, rub over it, and it's very intuitive. On this model, I think that's a great feature. Then I've got my shapes. So in here, very self-explanatory again. I can access all sorts of shapes, I can change the colours, I can even make them three-dimensional and then I can just pop them out there on the screen to use in class. I can add more pages in, I can even take steps back or forwards, which again is a key one when you're building in a new software and you're not very familiar with it, you're going to make mistakes, so it's nice to know that you can very simply take a step back or go forwards. So that's the software. There's lots more to learn about it. So as I said, if this is something you're keen on, obviously we'd have loads of training to ensure you can get the most out of it. But back onto the desktop, as I said, moving from interactive whiteboard to screens, it looks very different in the classroom, but actually it's very, very easy to use. This one comes in many different sizes as well to suit your classroom. And what I think would be good is to have a chat with us and what we can do is run you through what would be best in your classroom. From there, obviously, we can look at fitting you out with the right screen and then we can look at training to make sure you can get the most out of it. So I hope that was useful. I look forward to meeting you again soon. Take care, I'll see you then.